In this presentation, we will add payroll checks using bank feeds within QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're going to open up our reports on the bottom left-hand side. We'll start by opening up the balance sheet report. Then we'll change the dates up top. We're going to take this for 010120 to 123120. Then we're going to run that report. I'm going to duplicate the tab up top, right-clicking on it, and then duplicating it. Then I'm going to go back to the tab to the left. We're going to go on down to the reports once again. This time opening up the P&L, the profit and loss, the income statement report. Going to open up this report just for the current month that we're going to be working on. That's going to be April. So 0101, I'm sorry, not 01, we're going April 04, 0120, and then 0430, 30, uh, 20. Then we'll run that report. Then I'm going to duplicate the tab up top again, right-clicking on the tab up top and duplicating it. Then we're going to go back to the tab to the left. We're going to open up the banking section, considering the bank feeds, close up the hamburger up top, and there we have our transactions. Now we're considering these ones here with the Adam, the Erica uh, transactions. These are going to be our employees. Now employees are another one where the cash basis transactions is going to be a little bit more difficult just to record things if we have employees. Uh, on just a bank feeds type of method because there's going to be other things involved including the, the withholdings within it. So if you don't have employees then again the bank feeds relying completely on the bank is, is a little bit easier to do. If you have employees you got to figure out how you're going to fit that into the system. Now if you run uh, payroll through QuickBooks, QuickBooks will help you to generate the payroll checks or, or to calculate the payroll and, and then when you get into the bank feeds, you'll basically match the bank feed. The bank feed check then will be the net check that you'll basically have to match out, meaning you'll basically write the checks within QuickBooks. QuickBooks will help you to generate uh, the transaction or the, or the electronic transfer or whatever format it will be. And then you'll have to match that when you have the bank feeds and it'll just match those two up. If you have someone outside of QuickBooks helping you to record the payroll, such as an ADP or paychecks outside then, then they might give you their reports, their transaction reports, and you could basically then enter them into the system. So for example, if we're imagining we had ADP or paychecks, someone who's a payroll professional, another company helping us to process the payroll, then we might imagine that the payroll check is coming right out of our paycheck. It's being helped to do so by the third parties, by ADP and paychecks, and now we're seeing it in the bank feed. If we think of, of it in that format, notice that this check here, if this was Adam, and here's the check, only has the net check in it. In other words, if we were to pull up the transaction, typically just like you'd see in a pay stub, you usually have the gross check minus the withholdings, including Social Security, Medicare, income taxes, to basically get to the to the net check here. And this net check is what's coming out of the out of the bank account. Now, note what happens is you're going to have the net check here. And then you're going to pay off the payroll taxes sometime in the future. So typically what would happen at the point of payroll is you're going to say that uh, you have the payroll expense should be on the gross check. Then you take out the withholdings for it. The net check is in what comes out of the checking account. And then you have the, the employer side of the payroll taxes as, as well that would have to be then recorded. Then at a later point in time, you actually pay those payroll taxes. So, so then you would be paying off the payroll taxes with another check or another decrease to, to the checking account. Right now, all we see is the net check. So what we could do then is one system we could do, we could be on a cash basis method here to, to process this. We can write the net check, put that in, into the payroll expense, which is and the other side is going to decrease the checking account. And then, of course, when we make the payment, which is going to be whenever it's due, when we actually process the payment, and that's going to be helped to do so through paychecks or you know the third party vendor, then we'll see that coming through the bank feeds and that's going to be paying off the liability and then we can go ahead and record that which would be decrease in the checking account and uh, the difference we're going to be putting to payroll expense so that's how we can that's how we can record it now there's going to be a timing difference when we do that because again we're not recording the the payable that we have uh, as we go and all the detail for payroll then won't be in our QuickBooks system. We're just going to record the information on a cash basis. The detail then would be in the reports, kind of like this report would be a very short, uh, condensed type of report that we might get from the third party like the ADP or the paychecks. 
So in essence, we're just going to record this one, just the payroll expense here. I'm going to go, all right, we'll open this one up and we're going to say Adam Hamilton. And we'd have to add it either as an employee or a vendor if it wasn't in there in the system already. And then we're going to say that the category is going to be an expense. And we're just going to simply put it to payroll uh, expense. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to say payroll uh, expense. So there we have it. And I'm going to say that's it. I'm going to add that. All right, and then Eric, and then we have Erica. So I'm going to do the same thing for Erica. That's our other employee. So I'm going to, there's Erica. We can add her as a vendor or an employee. Once again, it's going to be payroll expense, which is which is an item that's probably included in the chart of accounts when you sign when you uh, get QuickBooks going. And then I'm going to add that. Then I think there's one more down here that it picked up. Now we had another uh, payroll check that happened to be in the same month down here. Here it is, payroll being picked up. Why is it in the same month, by the way? Probably because we processed the payroll check possibly last month for January, and Adam didn't uh, didn't cash the check. It didn't clear possibly until, or I'm sorry, in March. Last month was March. And then this month in April, possibly it didn't clear. That's why we have two checks for Adam. That could be one reason. So we're going to go ahead and then say, let's process this one. And, you know, this one he actually did cash pretty soon right so so the the last one both adam and erica didn't cash for march we wrote it they didn't cash it it didn't clear the bank until april so this one we wrote on in april adam uh cashed it it cleared the bank in april and uh, erica's did not so it's going to clear the the bank in may and that's when we'll see it show up so now it's picking this one up it says i recognize this one we're going to say great you're doing what we want. We're going to go ahead and add that. So we add that check as well. I'm not going to add or do any other rules at this point in time. So there we have that. Let's then go to our balance sheet. Let's uh, close up the hamburger. I'm going to hold down control, scroll up just a bit, and we're going to go into the checking account. Then if we go down into the checking account, we're going to say that we should have Adam and uh erica in here somewhere so here's an here's an atom that we have added and if i go to the right the other side is going to be in the payroll expense here's a here's another one here and so payroll expense i'm going to open that up if we open that up it's not going to go into any special payroll check as it would if we were po processing it through uh payroll within quickbooks it just goes to a normal expense type item a decrease in other words to uh the checking account so we don't have the detail in here. We don't have the detail of uh, the, the net check that we would need to basically provide to the employee. All, but we do have uh, what we need to enter into the financial statements to reconcile the bank statement and to have the, ca the, the bank statements uh, recognized on a cash basis. So let's close this back out. Let's go back up top. And we're going to go back to our... Uh, balance sheet. Let's go to the P and L then. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the profit and loss, clicking on the URL and, and then I'll scroll back down. And then the other side is going to be in payroll expenses here. So we have the payroll expense. We've got the three checks. Note, we probably didn't write three checks in April. We probably wrote two of them or processed them in March and they didn't clear until April or something like that. And then we had this other one that did clear in the same month that, that it was generated or processed. Now, if they're electronic transfers, you would expect then they would be in the same month. But if they were checks, then you could have that kind of, of lag between the deposit time and the time that the checks were written. So if I go back up top and go back to the prior tab, let's see this for the year now. I'm going to put this in as of 010120 uh, to 43020, run that report. And then I'm going to change the totals to uh, months so that we can see the comparison. And then we'll run that report. And then if I go down to the payroll, uh, note when we entered it in January and February, we have what you would expect, right? Two basically payroll checks that have been processed or the payroll was processed resulting in payroll expense that would be the same for the two months given if they were on salary or something like that. And then we had the payroll, uh, the payroll taxes which is our portion or the employer portion. Whereas in March, we had nothing. Why? Because we, we entered the check, but possibly it didn't clear until the following month, until April. So the March checks, there's nothing in March because they didn't clear the bank. 
until April. And then in April, we have what looks like, you know, three checks uh, cleared because we have two employees and and two pay periods would, would be four checks. So the two March checks cleared and, and only one of the April checks cleared, right? So there's a little bit of timing difference and distortion in the difference. Also, when I look at the paychecks here, if I go to the payroll expense, you'll note that these are for the for the full gross pay amount of the check, the 4583 for, for Adam, for example. And if I go back and look at um, look at the April item for the payroll, we have the net check, the 3539. So, and if I go back, then uh, the 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 different and the difference between the two. Now, if if I the the other side of the check of these checks on um, on the balance sheet, all, the same amount came out of the checking account. The difference went to the liability. So the difference in these checks went to the uh, a payroll liability account. We're not doing the payroll liability because that would be more of an accrual basis We're, in, in this system. We're just skipping the payroll liability and then we're going to pay the payroll liability and that's going to be handled by the payroll company. And then we'll see that happen when they actually make the payment. And that's when we will record it when the actual payment was made. Then the payroll taxes down here is another journal entry. If I go into this, that's going to be a journal entry form. No cash is affected at that point in time. Again, this is something that will be handled by the payroll company to help process what we owe and our portion of the payroll taxes. But we don't see it clearing the bank yet until it's actually paid. So that would go into the liability. Later on, we're going to see that that amount will actually be paid. And then, we will re and then we'll record it as basically payroll taxes or just group it together in payroll expenses, which will include payroll taxes and payroll expenses. So the bottom line is that, you, again, you're going to have kind of a timing difference if you're on a cash basis system because we're going to be reliant on everything clearing the bank. And you could only use a system like this if you can have the detail of this being happening for you if you do have payroll by some other company that could then provide the detail because every employee does need a paycheck stub either electronically or, uh, or a paper stub giving them their amount of withholdings and all that kind of added detail. You don't necessarily need that added detail in the financial statements because we need the overall detail for the payroll as a whole. So, uh, so you can enter this detail in, in as the checks clear. And then you can also possibly think about working with a CPA firm or accounting firm at year end to make any kind of uh, adjustments you need to do with payroll to tie out in essence to the, the payroll registers here for tax preparation at the end of the year uh, if necessary or just financial statement adjustments on a monthly or yearly basis. And in that format, you may be able to keep then the transactions just on more of a cash basis, which will make it easy for you to just have the bank feeds that will enter into the system that you will clear and then you can reconcile everything uh, in that format.